some odd jobs today. Happy you're here. I hope you stay. Woohoo, it's a rhyme. Before we do that, I need to remove some keikis. I want to remove some orchids that are dead from some media that I would then like to recycle. Then I'm going to show you an update on the shelf that has the ICU orchids and I hope that we end up with some positive news because yes, we shall be getting rid of some orchids that haven't made it. The elephant in the room is under my umbrella, Ella, Ella. <laughs> I thought I'd start this video out with something really positive. It's gonna be a bit of a roller coaster ride. It's gonna be yay, cakeys, roots, let's go. It's gonna be oh, boo, orchids that didn't make it. The positive side is my Angraecum Crestwood is starting with the crypt tonight. So let's get the nasty out of the way and hopefully also end up with a positive. Intro to the video starts now. Please give this video a like. Why wait? <laughs> My little cakey machine, Dendrobium Berry Oda, decided to throw another spike, which is awesome. Another set of blooms has already faded, but I have three cakeys to remove from here because new cakeys are starting to grow as well, <laughs> which is wonderful, but it can start looking very messy very soon. And I've got some root tips on cakeys that I would like to make sure won't frazzle out in my beautiful warm summer breeze. We'll start with the easy one first. I did a video a while ago, what's best twist or cut. I showed both options. I'm going to link that video in the description. So we'll start with the easy one. It's got a beautiful root tip coming. And why not try to propagate this one? I'll give you an update on a cakey from the class of 2022, Berry Oda, right here. And it's got a new growth coming. This cakey mainly survives on condensation water. So what you see at the bottom is just condensation water. I normally do not even add water in here. It's pretty amazing. It's also growing a new root. So I want to put more cakeys into this cup. We'll see how it goes. Then I have a little one over here. I'd like to get rid of that, whether it's going to make it or not. I just want to tidy up my berry odor in the process as well. This one doesn't look to be really playing a huge part. Seems like I didn't, yeah, that root is still attached. And one root grew into the bract, of course, because that's what cakey roots do with berry odors. Let's see if we can't salvage this. Seeing as it doesn't have many leaves. Berry odor cakeys are pretty tough though. There we go salvaged. We'll see how this one does. Oh, there's a cakey right in our face, right here. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> it is one of those little tight squeezy ones. The cakey I just took off this growth right here, I could have cut the growth, saved part of the growth that it was still on. That would have given it more energy but I'm going a little bit fast in this video. There's a lot to see and a lot to do. So we have a root growing down in there. I'm just gonna pull it out. It has a few leaves. We'll see what it does. As this orchid is such a happy cakey producer, I try to save them all, but if I can't, then some collateral damage along the way. At least the mother plant can then focus on new growths instead of always producing keikis. Now keikis can also be a sign of stress. The orchid is stressed out, could be trying to propagate itself. That's not the case with the berry Oda. She just loves growing keikis and that's why we love her for it. Here we have a keiki that hasn't really amounted to anything. It doesn't have roots. I'm going to leave that on. It's not bothering me. Lots of keikis coming everywhere. There's another one right here. <laughs> I've got a new growth coming down there. I'm hoping maybe to get five or six new growths. One, yeah, that would be a little bit of a patetico progress show for 2023. Spin her around. Is there anything I'm missing? I know there's a cakey down here, right there. Growing new roots on a tiny little growth that it's growing while on the mother plant. I'm leaving it because this is a pretty bare area. Not gonna take that off, we'll see what it does. 
it's not in the way down there. I'm just checking to see if I've got any more other than the ones that are growing. <laughs> Look at that. Fantastic. Nope. No more keikis. So I'm going to put her back where she belongs and we'll make sure the keikis get water. For them, I have to add water now because they are not used to being off mama. You know, that garbage bag is a sign of what's to come. <laughs> For the time being, just plain RO water just to see if the roots will start absorbing water on their own. And then eventually I shall be adding fertilizer, seaweed, and all that fun stuff so we can consider this water culture for the foreseeable future. Everybody's got their maji around the roots. Perfect. My Zorbenikofia Humbertiana has seen better days, has had better conditions, and you can clearly see that it is not a happy camper. I've been watching since the start of spring, since she came outside. I've lost three leaves at the base already. I was very hopeful to see a new root coming out here, but it's, yeah. Stem rot, something rot. We're gonna take her out and we're gonna see what we're up against. I do have the intention of putting her into ICU if it's worth it. I know that one root is always very promising but I'm going to call it, this is not good. Not good at all. Meanwhile, let me just say, from my perspective, I'm happy to get the media back. Let's make sure we get that into a bucket. So she did grow roots in the pot because she's in here pretty. She doesn't want to budge. She's going to come out, see or see. I thought this was going to be like a, a very easy lift because Everything on the roots is feeling extremely soft. Oh, 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 oh. Do we have a good root? We have a partial good root there. Ah, don't do this to me. I think you're a goner, girl. But you see that? Okay, I need a catch tray. I thought this was gonna be so much easier. I did not expect a viable root in there, seeing as everything on the outside is nasty. So we'll just take that off and get a better perspective and see what's going on. One viable root, one root is coming, everything is yellowing, so we've separated her from all of that. Now let's see. So the root I cut off was partially viable, but that wasn't gonna last much longer. Everything else was deteriorating. So I'm not mad about that, but what is going on in here is interesting to say the least. Oh, I wish you were here giving me feedback immediately. How I wish you were giving me feedback immediately because now I want to know, is there hope? Well, I've got ICU set up. You guys, I don't know. I'm always such a wuss when it comes to somebody trying. It doesn't feel soft here at all. The stem doesn't feel soft. It doesn't mean anything, but there's a new leaf trying to come out. But you see, it's also yellow there. I'm not trying to convince myself to bin her. Okay, decision made. For the time being, we're gonna do it like this. And because that root is so accustomed to a lot of moisture around it, it's going straight into water like that. Plain water for the time being. And I'm trying to convince myself that plain water is a good way to go because she just had calcium and magnesium a couple of days ago. Yep, plain water for the time being. And we'll put her back on that ICU shelf. I didn't mean it to accumulate. I was trying to get rid of. Anyway, I'll be right back. Let's get back on track here because I know that this Tulumnia is a goner. This was my Tulumnia Gyrac Firm Snow White. And unfortunately, she is no more. I have other Tulumnias that are in rescue mode that I would like to show you, depending on how long this video is going to be. But definitely no doubt about it. We can take the lava rock from here and say thank you so, so much, Snow White, for being in the collection. And I'm really sorry that I dropped the ball on the scale issue in 2022. Yeah, 
with those beasties, it's tough to recover from. I get it. I tried. Okay, right. The next one that I'm thinking of tossing is my Leptotus bicolor from a nursery that I am not happy with at all. I have had this orchid since 2018. I have since have a replacement, but you see, the thing is with me again, I see a bits of green and it's growing a new growth. So I want to take it out of the pot, a new growth, which I can't see because it's everything's blinding and reflecting, but it's growing a new growth right here. So I want to take it out of the pot. I want my ceramics back and I'm hoping, to be honest with you, I'm hoping there are no viable roots so that we can just toss this orchid and get, you know, get another one of that nursery's orchids away from my collection. I still have PTSD from that order. New growth or not. No viable roots. Don't hate me. She is going to go into the bin. You see, I had prepared, to my credit, I had prepared ICU for her if there had been a viable route here, but nope, that's just not gonna cut it. She has never grown well for me. She's never been vigorous. And quite frankly, I tried. 2018, mm -mm -mm. What I would like to do though, is see if there's something in the rhizome. So I just moved you where I could see the screen. Let me have a look, see if there's even anything we can see here. Okay, what did I just cut? <laughs> Is there even anything to be seen here? I can't tell. Yes, I'm looking for Fusarium. She was in that box. I can't tell. Maybe once the screen is bigger. From what I'm looking at, I don't see Fusarium, but it's so hard to tell with a small rhizome like that. Anyway, I am not thrilled that she's gone, but in a way I'm thrilled that she's gone because, oh my goodness. If you've been with my channel since 2020, you know where my brain is at at the moment. So that takes care of everything I wanted to do on the patio. If you would like to join me for a quick recap on what's going on in that shelf yonder, there is some good news. So I just applied a little bit more garlic alcohol onto my Lodigesii, my Catacetum Lodigesii, because a pest is attacking that one. But I wanted to show Serato Stylus Philippinensis. Still trying to make it work for this orchid. Michael McCarthy, Melissa Walker, and the Orchid Room. You gifted me this orchid back in 2020. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I'm not doing very well, even though the humidity dome, etc. But I just wanted to show you, she's still here and she's clean. She also was affected with that thrips or mites situation I had last year. Probably a combination of both. I've never had spider mites. So last year, 2022 was my first time. Here are the cakeys that we've just dealt with. And this is what I'm dealing with, with my Lord Jessie. She's looking, I know, I know, but she's looking much better than she did in 2022 this time around. That's her bulb from 2022, which I could actually grow, incredible. So I'm watering her even though the roots aren't very long, but you can see that this orchid seems to have a reoccurring theme going on, but I'm treating it with garlic alcohol and insecticidal soap. I think that we've got some thrips issues with this orchid. Why they always come back to her, I don't know. I've moved my Gloriosa lilies away from this shelf back to the east side of the patio because I have a feeling that that plant actually brought in thrips because her leaves were a mess as well last year. Anywho, so here is my Zelimnia Midas. And this is the growth that we had coming when we started the rescue operation here for these orchids that were badly affected. So that growth is an actual fact maturing to something of substance. I'm hoping now for roots. I have no complaints with that one. Here is a Tolumnia. Forgive me, I'm in an awkward position here, but this is Tolumnia Red Devil. If I can't see the names, it's not because I'm not gonna be jiggling my Tolumnias around. I hope everything is in focus, but she was also a scale issue. Really struggled throughout the winter, but we have a new growth coming right there. I hope you could see that. There is a new growth right at the base. 
hopefully that will produce roots and revive her. So there's some positive signals coming in this little ICU area. Here's another Tolumnia. Also, I'm not going to keep repeating it. Even I keep saying I'm not going to keep repeating it. Here, scale. So I'm always treating them with garlic alcohol, but we have the new growth that was, you know, it had stopped. It has not progressed, but it's growing another new growth right here and new roots. So I'm really hoping with the water level, keeping the humidity up, making sure the old roots are kind of the drawing factor for the new roots. I'm hoping that we can save her. And then in the back, let me see if I can scooch a few things around. You can probably understand why I don't do much moving here. When I deal with this shelf, it's all in one go so that I don't keep jostling things around. Anyway, Berry Oda Cakey, class of 2021. You can see how pathetic they are. Amazing, considering I have a class of 22 cakey pot that is in lava rock and semi-hydro as well, and it is growing four new growths. It's insane. But anyway, 2021, we've got a new growth. Not giving up on that. Got some roots going through the hob filter material, the setup that it was in for the longest time. So that didn't die back. My Jaira Kiku pieces here. Oh, I'm very happy to see that there is a root that is actually hydrating right there. So these pieces were from probably some kind of a stem, let's say a fungus, not necessarily Fusarium. I don't think it's Fusarium, but we have new growth right here, which is awesome. Hopefully new roots and bit by bit, the two back pieces may recover and I say two because yes here's another one not as far advanced as the previous one that we saw but also still relevant and still alive and the roots are hydrating tiny little new growth coming right there another thing I have here on this lower shelf my ICU shelf is let me put everything back the way it was so that I don't lose track of anything ah yes well we've just ditched a tolumnia so there's space for zelemnia there here is a bloom and shiny eye the one little back bulb that fell off when i potted up the entire plant grew two new growth since we did that i'm struggling for it to grow roots though a little bloom and shiny eye this is insane she still isn't looking shriveled probably will get some roots eventually so cool to watch this going on and here is my Mr. City Eye, which I'm a little bit concerned about. So there's still something white in here. Can't really identify what it is. But I went at it with alcohol earlier on. Maybe it's just a bit of debris. Now, Mr. City, I'm saying I'm concerned is because normally I should have the second leaf growing by this time of year. The first leaf is trying. It's not moving. And then this leaf right here, it's clearly going to be coming off during the video. So this one's been dying back. Now this one last year was affected by the thrips, the mites, etc. So the fact that it's dying back, okay, fine. The stem looks to be okay. But you can see that I've got some damage from last year from those pests up here as well. So I'm hoping that's not a sign of things to come, that eventually all the leaves start declining from the top down. Meanwhile, I do prefer if a leaf declines from the top down, because that means there is no stem rot, not the same as you saw with the Zubernicofia humbertiana. That was just debris, thank goodness. So, I mean, I can be painting away at the base until I'm blue in the face. Even that rhymed. I already did all this, but thankfully that was just a bit of debris. So I don't know what's keeping Mr. City Eye from progressing the way she normally does. She's got viable roots in the pot. So fingers crossed we're not going to lose her. That would be a shame. She's been doing fabulously in my collection since she arrived. And then just one more thing, even though that doesn't include the shelf I was just showing. Here is my Trichocentrum. <laughs> Tigrina. Remember we just placed that on the surface of the media and see what happens. Well, you can see the leaves are declining. They're shriveling up. I don't see any sign of new growth. I miss this orchid every day just to keep everything humid and you can see how dry things are because 
that was three hours ago and I now have 10% humidity <laughs> which I think is wonderful because that means it's warm but it is an issue for orchids that are totally stressed out and probably on the way out and here's our Zobenicofia humbertiana that we just dealt with so that was a quick recap a few little bit of odd jobs I hope that you enjoyed the video saw a few little things that I was doing on the patio today there's more to do, but I think that Zobinicofio Humbertiana kind of threw a wrench into my scheduling. This video is probably much longer than I anticipated. So what I'm going to ask you to do is, if you would like to follow the progress of the orchids that you saw today, please consider subscribing to the channel because your support is so much needed and so appreciated. Let me know if you have any questions, any suggestions, or what do you think by what you saw today? Good, bad, indifferent. <laughs> Every comment is welcome. Even just say hi. It's always so good to see you. Have a fabulous day. On that one condition though, please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.